different tactics. From what I've seen on the video so far, they're showing a lot more restraint than I think you could expect in most places in the United States. Uh, the, uh, the use of the Molotov cocktails, uh, the throwing the rocks in bottles, the, the striking him with clubs uh, would all be considered lethal force in the United States. If you're dealing with petrol bombs, that's a lethal situation. In the United States, you could very quickly be shot with lethal force uh, for throwing a petrol bomb at us. The dragging of the police officer and then clubbing him while he was down could very easily result in some type of lethal force to protect the police officer. Meanwhile, in over a dozen regions across Ukraine, enraged mobs have been besieging local governments. In eight of them so far, rioters have occupied government buildings and declared that they will not obey the authority of President Yanukovych. What started as peaceful pro-EU rallies last November have now effectively set half the country ablaze. Alexei Irshevsky looks at how the protest has transformed. Those young people in the streets of Ukraine by freezing temperatures are writing the new narrative for Europe. Ever since the first rocks and Molotov cocktails were hurled at the police in Kiev last Sunday, officials in Europe and the United States have started a fresh wave of accusations aimed at the actions of the authorities against what they called peaceful protesters. We expect from the Ukrainian government that they ensure democratic freedom, in particular the opportunity for peaceful demonstrations, that they protect life and that the use of violence does not take place. But people beating police on the ground, bombarding the lines with explosive projectiles and even taking them hostage can hardly be classified as peaceful. Even pictures of rioters carrying firearms are surfacing. I'm quite skeptical that these uh, riots will be uh, deal with, uh, dealt with effectively in the near future. They will continue for some time. There are nationalists there, there are uh, neo-Nazi uh, there, and uh, there are uh, representatives of the so-called uh, right sector group, which combines hooligans and um, neo-Nazi and rightists from all sides east and west and all sides of political spectrum. Therefore, I do not think that everyone will follow the call of opposition leaders to, for a peaceful resolution of this, of this conflict. Some of these youth are hell-bent on violence and they will continue for some time. Over the past two months, the Euromaidan has changed in form and meaning. What started as a peaceful pro-EU protest has turned into a display of violence on both sides. It has now grown in size too, with almost half of the country's regional administrations taken over, spawning serious concerns the country could fall apart. Any sort of uh, split scenario which uh, could happen within uh, next weeks, uh, this must be described as quite possible because government wouldn't have enough forces. Ukraine will be split probably in two parts. Uh, with uh, two different countries. The opposition is still locking horns with those in power, trying to get a better deal with the president. But the protesters storming a police base and booing the people who are acting as their leaders suggest they no longer want to listen to anyone and care little about any agreed truce. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Kiev in Ukraine. And as riots keep spreading west from the capital, geopolitical analyst Eric Dreiter says opposition leaders have long since lost control over what goes on in Kiev or elsewhere. Well, I think at this point it's quite clear that they don't have direct control over the rioters. What control they do have is uh, purely from the public relations perspective. It's obviously a chaotic situation that has gotten out of control, and I doubt that anyone has a real handle on uh, uh, control of the situation. Their intention was never to win political concessions. It was never to come to a political settlement. Their, their true intentions have been quite apparent all along, and that is regime change, to bring forward regime change in the Ukraine in order to overthrow throw that government. We see something quite similar in 2004 with the so-called Orange Revolution. It's been done uh, all over the world over the course of the last 20 years or so, and this is no different. But as the country's east has remained resilient to the burning barricades and round the clock violence in Kiev, pledging support for the legitimate government and the Constitution instead. Our correspondent Paula Slier is there. The industrial heart of the Ukraine is a place where the majority has been silent until now. The violent pictures from Kiev are spurring people here into action, but not in support of the anti-government rioters. 
I cannot sit at home when there are such things happening in Ukraine. The protests in Kyiv are horrible. We are brothers. We are all Ukrainians. In the east and south of the country, support for President Yanukovych is high, while tolerance for rioting is low. These demonstrators blame opposition parties for using hot-headed students to destabilize the country. Young people are like zombies. They get information from the Internet, and this information is only one side. The USA and the West are paying for this information to be put out. Gregory Green is a correspondent with the local Vesti newspaper. He wants order, and for as long as the government provides it, he says he'll support it. The message of the protesters regularly changes. Their main idea in the beginning was to join the European Union. The next weekend it was political change and they wanted the president to go. Now I think even the protesters cannot say why they're demonstrating. Unlike the demonstrators in Kiev, most of the more than 4 million people who live in the country's most populous region don't believe Ukraine's future lies in Europe. Uh, the losing of... Uh... Russian market is the worst thing for Donetsk region. So that is uh, the main reason why uh, our people uh, don't uh, want to join the um, uh, European Association. Protesters complain that Kiev rioters are wasting time on the streets, while it's the country's east that keeps the economy alive. And if Ukraine was to join Europe now, its factories would be turned into scrap. People here envision a different future to the anti-government protests. What they want is a quick end to the demonstration and a deal to join the Russian Customs Union. This, they say, will give them the stability and security that the Kiev protests are threatening to unravel. Paulus Lea, RT, Donetsk, Ukraine. Well, we can find the full timeline of the